Wilson Sporting Goods Company has the largest market share in the sporting and athletic goods industry. Its strongest competitors, such as Anthony Industries, Johnson Worldwide Associates, and Spalding and Evenflow are nowhere in sight. Wilson Sporting Goods has maintained the lion's share of the market throughout its history. This is primarily because of its focus on manufacturing high-quality products in the categories of basketball, football, volleyball, golf, baseball, soccer, racquetball, squash, footwear, team uniforms, and an extensive line of sports apparel. Of all the company's products, it was the sale of golf equipment that catapulted Wilson Sporting Goods into a place of prominence within the industry during the 1980s and 90s. The company's plant in Humboldt, Tennessee was manufacturing more than 45,000 golf balls on a daily basis. It had grown to become the third largest golf ball plant in the whole world. Due to its position in the marketplace and its growing presence overseas, Wilson Sporting Goods was purchased by WSGC Holdings in 1985. The 1989 merger between WSGC Holdings and Bogey Acquisition Company resulted in Wilson Sporting Goods becoming a wholly owned subsidiary of the Amer Group, located in Helsinki, Finland. Welcome to the Rich Rabbit! And today we'll be talking about Wilson's brand history, how it started and where it stands now. And also all the hurdles and landmarks the company has been a part of. But before we begin, please do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Now fasten your seatbelts and let's take you back to the day it all started. It was 1913 when Wilson Sporting Goods was manufactured as the Ashland Manufacturing Company. It was originally established to find unique ways of using slaughterhouse byproducts of a nearby meat packing firm, its parent company owned by Salzberger and Schwarzschild. By 1914, the company was producing items like tennis racket strings, violin strings, and surgical sutures and had expanded into baseball shoes and tennis rackets. In 1915, the company appointed Thomas E. Wilson as president. And from that moment onward, nothing was the same. Wilson, a hard-headed businessman who saw the potential of a sporting goods company, broke away from the parent firm of Salzberger and Schwarzschild. He began to focus exclusively on the manufacture of sporting and athletic equipment, and then named the company after himself in 1916. Thomas Wilson immediately started to expand the operations of his company by acquiring the Hedzinger Knitting Mills and a small caddy bag company. Hedzinger was purchased for the purpose of producing high-quality athletic uniforms, while the caddy bag company's extensive line of luggage products was reduced to the manufacture of golf bags alone. Basketballs and footballs were also added to the company's rapidly growing list of items for sale. In 1917, the company was so confident in the quality of its product line that it announced a two-year unconditional guarantee on all of its products. During the same year, the company began manufacturing golf clubs and football helmets. Although Thomas E. Wilson left the company in 1918, no interruption occurred in either the manufacture of its products or the growth of its revenues. By the end of the year, sales reached the 1 million mark, an enormous amount of money for a company that had been in existence for only a short period of time. The company closed out the decade by acquiring Chicago Sporting Goods Company, a manufacturer of uniforms. The two companies reached an agreement to supply all the equipment for the Chicago Cubs baseball team and by hiring Arch Turner, one of the prominent craftsmen in the leather industry. Hiring Turner was prophetic since his innovative designs for the leather footballs had a profound influence on the development of the game. 
But despite all the interference from other sports, who would have thought that in the coming times, Wilson will dominate the tennis world? In 1914, the company established the first Wilson racket. Crafted in all second growth ash tree, the fine comb cedar handle was priced at only $0.75. Following that in 1917, Wilson's catalog included 28 models in total, one of which was called the Blue Ribbon, which was made of white ash, walnut and reinforced with dogwood. This racket featured a special oval shape. In 1935, the release of the original leather tennis handle wrap, known as the mahogany leather grip, gave athletes unparalleled feel and grip for the time. The business made a key strategic move in the late 1950s by joining forces with American Jack Kramer, a successful player who helped create the open era of competition that exists today. The Kramer-Wilson partnership led to the creation of the Jack Kramer Autograph, which turned out to be one of the top selling rackets of all time. The racket was known for adding power to the game and was produced featuring all ash laminated construction. The racket was used by John McEnroe, Tracy Austin, Arthur Ashe, Billie Jean King and many others on its way to winning more Grand Slams than any other racket of its time. Even though Wilson passed away in 1958, his tennis brand kept developing. And in 1967, the company introduced the first steel racket, the Wilson T2000. Wilson's momentum continued when Jimmy Connors, the top player in the game, endorsed the T2000 in winning major championships. Soon after, in 1969, Wilson released the Billie Jean King autograph racket with a Stratabout technology. This racket was known for its long handle pallets to reduce torque and flexibility in the head. This racket helped Billie Jean King win her record fifth Wimbledon victory. In high demand in 1975, Wilson introduced a championship racket designed to meet the needs of serious female players, the Chris Everett Autograph. This racket was lighter and more flexible overall, which increased power and included white ash and Stratabau construction. In 1979, Wilson tennis balls were first used at the US Open, which are still prominent to this day. The Australian Open slowly followed in 2006. With a in 1981-82, John McEnroe used a Jack Kramer Pro Staff model to win three of his 11 career majors. McEnroe won back-to-back -back Wimbledon championships at a US Open, establishing himself as the top player at the time. In the 1980s, Wilson began developing rackets with an entirely new construction made with graphite and Kevlar. And then in 1987, the Wilson Profile racket was the first wide-body racket which provided a completely new level of power. Californian Pete Sampras continued the Wilson tradition using the original Kevlar Pro Staff 85 racket featuring a head size of 85 square inches for the majority of his entire professional career. The racket was launched in 1983 and was also used by Stefan Edberg and Jim Courier. Sampras won 14 Grand Slam singles titles during his career, which was an open era record at the time of his retirement in 2002. In 1990, Wilson introduced a more user-friendly hammer technology which provided the recreational player with more power and the largest sweet spot of any rackets of its time. The Hammer 2.7 SI weighed only 10 ounces and was one of the lightest and most powerful rackets. The Sledge Hammer 3.8, released in 1993, took the Hammer system one step further. In 1998, the Hyper Sledge Hammer 2.0 quickly became the number one selling racket in the US market, with hypercarbon the lightest, stiffest and strongest material. In the early 2000s, 
Wilson's Triad 3.0 made its way into the industry with a revolutionary tie component, which separated the entire head from the handle joint of the new polymer called Isozor. This allowed those who enjoy the power from hammer frames with arm-friendly absorption and a bit more control. Later in the 2000s, Wilson introduced ENCO 2004 and K-Factor in 2007, which Serena Williams and Roger Federer switched to for the Australian Open to take home the title. Both players switched to BLX in 2009. Wilson continued to position themselves among the game's legends by signing both Roger Federer and Serena Williams to endorsement contracts, still in effect today. Perhaps the two best players of all time, Federer and Williams, have used Wilson Rackets to win a stunning 43 combined major singles championships in their careers. Technologies introduced in the 2010s included Spin Effect 2014, DNA Design 2016 and Countervail technology. Countervail is an all-new patented material integrated exclusively into Wilson performance frames. Thanks to it, the ball's energy is now directed within the frame instead of the body. This resulted in less exhaustion and vibration and increased accuracy and control. Over its rich history, Wilson has become a sporting goods conglomerate. The company owns brands like Attac, DiMarini, EvoShield, Louisville Slugger and Luxilon. Moreover, Wilson provides sports equipment and protective gear for baseball, lacrosse, softball and of course tennis. The company has also gone through several ownership changes. In 1985, Wilson was acquired by Westray Capital Corporation through subsidiary WSGC Holdings. In 1989, WSGC merged with Bogey Acquisitions Company, which is affiliated with the Finnish group Amor Sports. Even with all of the changes, the iconic W is recognizable on every Wilson tennis racket and brings a distinct level of excellence to the court. Wilson is much more of a guarantee than just a brand. All the big names have used Wilson to win a Grand Slam at some point in their career. We hope that you liked our video and found it informative. And if you did, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Your valuable suggestions are very important to us, so do post them in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video.